great feeling of dismay, people thinking it's all over, that uh, the bad guys won, what's it all been about, do the Trump team really know what they're doing, to, you know, just, just despondency. And so quite a few people have, um, you know, sent messages saying, give us an update, Simon, give us an update, give us your take on things. Right, those of you who are new to uh, me, uh, you will have missed, of course, some weeks ago, I said that there was a five or a six point plan uh, to get Trump back to the White House. And SCOTUS, the Supreme Court of the United States, was only part four of that plan. So my first words to everyone are, calm down. Take it a little bit easier. It is not over. It is not the end. Um, and I want to talk you through what the situation, how the situation unfolded uh, and where we are now. And we can look at what's around the corner. Um, I, I was a, what Americans call a driving teacher, what in Europe we call a, uh, you know, a, you know, a driving, uh, uh, not an assistant, but, you know, a job was to literally teach people to, young people particularly, to, to drive. So as a driving instructor in Great Britain, um, I used to say to people, uh, look at my nails, they're not all bitten down with worry. And when my nails are all very bitten down, then you should start to worry. Now my nails are not all bitten down and I'm not starting to worry. So I remember that the mainstream media will sell what has occurred in a certain way. Remember that uh, alternative websites will go into an absolute meltdown and panic and many of those anchor guys or presenters who don't have access to Intel uh, are, are knocked off the, the position and I can understand that. So let me tell you what I'm aware of, what I've been made aware of, and then you can add that in and put it into the rest of it. But there is no time for panic here. You know, the, the volcano is not erupted. It's fine and the shops are still open. Okay, right, here we go. Personally, I never had a huge uh, support or idea that the legislatures at this early stage of the action would be prepared to uh, do anything. And also those people who are, you know, planning Trump team's operations also knew. If you think that that particular committee has been going for over 200 years and over 200 years, these state legislatures very, very occasionally have to do any work. I'm not being disrespectful. Their normal job, and, and remember, I was a, a lawmaker. I was a, a city councillor for th three terms of office. So I do understand politics. Okay, America's America and Britain's Britain, but politics is politics the world over. Um, and if you have a, a committee or a legislature that doesn't really have to do anything important uh, for 200 plus years, except ratify elections, which we in Great Britain say you rubber stamp it, you stamp the piece of paper and that's it, it's official. You actually forget what your role is. Now, Americans in particular have learned about the Constitution in school and college. And for them, and that, I'm talking about intelligence operatives, I'm talking about men and women in the military, I'm talking about ordinary, decent Americans. For, for you guys, the Constitution is very clear. You understand it, um, and it's a, a clear pathway. But when you're a politician or a paid official within the political system, it is not the same. Now, I know you would say to me, well, of course it's the same, but, but it isn't. There's one thing to have a document that is kept behind bulletproof glass, that is revered and loved, and the world points to it and says, you know, I wish we had something like that. We don't have a constitution, a bill of rights. That's that's wonderful. We'd like that. And when the founding fathers created that, they never for one moment thought there wouldn't be anybody to implement it. Now, legislatures are politicians and suddenly of 200 plus years of actually not having to do anything uh, to go from what we call naught to 60, uh, uh, they, they couldn't face it. It was too much for them. So most of the legislatures 
just don't want to face it at the moment. Now, when Texas sent the bill through, um, it was rebuffed. It was pushed back because it was procedurally wrong. That doesn't mean that it was badly written. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that the uh, in law, the reason for it to be there was judged by the Supreme Court not to be valid. Texas was used because it allowed the Trump team to go straight to SCOTUS. And what SCOTUS has actually done is, is actually, if you, if you understand the law, has knocked it back to the district courts. So what they've said is that the, the Texas bill has failed because it's not appropriate for SCOTUS to deal with. Now, had it been an individual, uh, then actually it might have done better. That is why, at the very last stage, President Trump put his name to it very late in the day, and a lot of senators and, and Congress uh, representatives put their names to it because they suddenly got uh, legal advice, and I could have told them, but I'm, I'm not there, that without an individual leading it, it wasn't actually going to have much effect. And that's, as I say, why very late in the day, they suddenly rushed to put individuals' names on there and, and the president's name on there. So it didn't fail because the court didn't want to look uh, at the evidence. It didn't fail because the court was frightened. It failed because these Supreme Justices are actually justices. They're, they're, they're down the middle of the road and they actually said that it's not procedurally accurate for us to do it. There's a lot of panic and the media are saying it's been thrown out. That's not accurate. What, what the Supreme Court has said is that it goes away redoes it they're quite happy to have it back but that of course is being lost even even people in the alternative media are, are not picking that up and you know they've gone and got uh, you know, great lawyers and well-known uh, attorneys and they're all pontificating on it from their own perspective and and it's very skewed in not getting the right point here so it doesn't mean that the supreme court has turned its back on the Constitution, on the people of America, it means that the court has actually said, and by a very large majority, actually, that it wasn't it wasn't Texas's place to bring this uh, regarding other states. Now, you know that has caused a huge panic. I don't know why, because if you really look into it, uh, there are several other more important cases going. Please remember that the reason they pushed this one was because it went straight to the Supreme Court, because so many of the lower courts are corrupt. OK, Sidney Powell hasn't even testified yet. That's an important point. Secondly, uh, in, in Michigan, I can tell you that some what I'm just I can I can relate to as forensic evidence. I can't give you any more than that has been found which hasn't yet been used because that the, the 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 Texas law suit was really about um, it wasn't about fraud it was about uh, our Americans being treated fairly that's really what it was it was mainly about so it didn't actually touch on the fraud aspect that hasn't even been brought yet so I can tell you that Sidney Powell uh, and and others have evidence of a very specific technical nature. Do, for those of you who, who are, are a bit worried, do you know that Kamala Harris hasn't even resigned from the Senate? Kamala Harris hasn't resigned and given up her Senate seat. Now that tells, I think, many, many commentators that she's not sure where she's going. And if she resigns her Senate seat and clearly doesn't become the VP, she can't go back to the Senate. So the very fact that she's holding on to the Senate seat tells you that they're more frightened than, than my audience. Because what's happening is that wrongly, it's not, it's not your fault, wrongly, uh, uneducated uh, alternative media built the Texas thing up 
to be the only thing going. Now, I quite rightly said that the Texas lawsuit was a game changer. And, and it absolutely is. If the Supreme Court had accepted that, then President Trump would have been in four more years. No question of it. That it was a massive game changer. And it was that lawsuit that caused the bad guys to uh, literally go berserk. Um, and we, we're aware of that uh, woman uh, lawmaker who went on YouTube and did a hate video uh, and her own Senate, her own uh, state has removed her from all the committees. She can't be taken off fully because only the people can do that. And what that tells us above and beyond all of the hate and the vitriol is that these people are confident that they can make statements like this and have no comeback. That's the arrogance to which they've gone. That's at the middle rank of these people. When we go to the top rank, like the Bidens and the, and the Harrises, they're actually getting daily briefings from their own side. And they're not at all sure that they will actually will ever go into the White House. That's an important point. Biden has been completely and utterly frozen out of everything. You know, never mind what the media tell you. He is not getting access to anything, predominantly because the military don't want him. You know, I have actually said several times the U.S. military can't abide Biden. I like those words. He can't abide Biden. They don't want him. And and we're on phase four of a five or a six part plan. Uh, and all of the legal options have to be explored and worked through before that leaves us with plan six the last part of it or five i can't remember what number i originally was given now it doesn't matter um you see if it goes to a point where there are thousands upon thousands of people out on the streets uh, you know demonstrating and the police say that they cannot control the situation and the National Guard come out the National Guard say they can't control the situation and that is when the Trump will will enact an insurrection act or at least a state of emergency um, you know and that's the final throw of the dice that's that's the option that, that he has at the very end of the day but if you believe in truth and justice and you believe in the Constitution you don't want to go down that road unless you're really forced to um, and it has given state legislatures more time to come to terms and understand the power that they really have. And these people who probably don't do a great deal, and I, again, I I'm, may sound rude, but they don't do a great deal in terms of making momentous decisions for the United States, now suddenly find that instead of spending 40 minutes on a, on a virtual meeting, um, arguing this, that, and the other, uh, they are actually being asked to decide the fate of the Republic. Now, unless you're a pretty seasoned and calm person, they will bite their fingernails right down because they've never had that sort of responsibility before. You see, I'm not an American, but I know that the governor is very powerful in states. And so all these committees or small groups tend to give towards the governor. It, it, the governor's office tends to be the central point, even when the political color is different between the two groups. Over the over the years, since perhaps the 50s and 60s and onwards, the governor's office has really become the all powerful institution within the government of that state. So to go to a group of men and women who just normally sit and chat uh, about this, that and the other to make such decisions. Uh, frankly, for most of them is, is fearful. And I think that one of the things we've learned from this is that the Americans would want to think very clearly and carefully about who they elect as state legislatures in the future. In other words, what you need are men and women with a backbone, with a spine. You need men and women who are not frightened to make a decision that benefits the United States. Um, so that's that's what's happened at local level. At the at the main level, um, 
it's not over by any chalk. Was it 37 days um, when, when uh, Bush and Gore were fighting over one state? And here we've got many states. And it, it really doesn't matter if on the 14th uh, or whenever states declare for Biden because they are declaring on the figures that they've been given, which at a later date can be shown to be wrong. The other thing that, that in between the lines the uh, SCOTUS was saying was that it would be more powerful to, to um, re-present uh, the Texas bill after the states have formally ratified for Biden. And I think the key word is that the damage has then been done. At the moment, uh, there's nobody being called as president. The media are calling Biden, but actually, technically, legally, that's not the case. So, you know, it put again, it puts SCOTUS in a difficult position because neither side has declared. And they have actually said privately and confidentially, if you want to re-put it back and change the way you present this, um, we will definitely look at it. So it is not, it's not been sold accurately. The representation of what's occurred has not been sold accurate, accurately. This is not the death of any chance to uh, bring Trump back in. It is one of part four of a five or a six plan. Um, and those who, who are able to remember what I've said before, remember I said to you in the first what I call update for this particular subject, that providing people did what they said they would do, President Trump will do another four years. Providing, I said, the people who have the responsibility, who either put him there or have the responsibility to keep him there, as long as they're true, then that's what will happen. Um, so we need to be steady. You need to be calm. Uh, and there's a lot of people on the alternative media who frankly do not know what they're talking about. They actually don't. They probably sit and watch four or five uh, YouTube presentations or something or other, put it all together into a, a great big cooking pot that absolutely looks and tastes disgusting, and then actually serve that to the audience. So I'm not at all surprised that people are absolutely confused, running around, what's going on, this, that, and the other. And the established media are very good at, you know, putting the line out that, yet again, the courts have pushed Trump away. Uh, the people that I've spoken to over the last few hours, and, you know, God bless them, you know, they've been up all night. You know, that, that's, that's the way it is. Uh, no one's in any doubt uh, that the White Hats are firmly in control. Um, and I have to be careful what we say here, but... but We've talked about troop movements and we've talked about the Navy deploying to certain places and the United States Air Force, particularly Nellis, Nevada, uh, and many other, other air bases. We've seen and been told of a lots of interesting regular movements, what you would expect. Um, you know, the game, the game is not obvious to most people it cannot be because if you advertise all the cards in your hand you might as well just walk away from from the pool table so you can't you have to hold the cards back and i know it's incredibly frustrating it's really really difficult because you know you are getting one-sided information and the people that you are going to don't actually know the truth so they're giving you stuff which doesn't help you've just got to stay calm the the official words coming through the military, through the White Hats, is hold the line. Okay, so go right back to 1776. Go right back to the times when uh, you guys gave the British a thorough hiding, as we say. You, you sent the British packing. Um, you know, millions and millions of you will be the minute men of old won't you you'll be there ready to go on the streets to support the president to say that you're not happy with the way things are going uh, and you know you will play your part in supporting the united states and the constitution because you do not want uh, what is supposed to be the land of the free becoming the land of the chained you know 
you know, you threw off those shackles for slavery. You threw off all that oppression. It took you a long time, but you did it. it. Took lots of countries a long time. Nobody who is a good God fearing and maybe not God fearing, but just a, a good person wants to go back and willingly put themselves in shackles. Who wants to put chains around your legs and your arms willingly? Or I'll do it for you so that you can control me. No, that's not going to happen. So the American citizens will not let this happen. The, the military will not let this happen. President Trump is no way going to concede. Uh, so what I'm saying to everyone is just hold on, hold the line, Keep calm. Be careful. There's a lot of stuff on social media or alternative media that is not accurate, that is just feeding fear. Um, and don't even listen to mainstream media. So, so there's lots more to be done in the courts before the final part of any plan is put into action. There's a ton more stuff to be done in the courts. And you know, no decent, God-fearing person can believe that every court in the United States is corrupt. It would be a pretty poor show if every legislature, if every justice was already turned and corrupted. Now, I don't believe that for a minute. I think there are a, a, a ton of good men and women in the United States who are prepared to stand up. And of course, what they're dealing with is uh, very credible threats of violence to them and their family. And I wrote a, a quick message to somebody uh, a little while back saying that there were a, a number of key people that needed uh, Marines to guard them 24-7. And I got the question back, well, give us a list. Give us a list of names. Who? But there are people who are going to need, you wouldn't want the CIA or the FBI guarding you at the moment, would you? Um, but you might quite be happy with, with Marines guarding you. So I think there are a number of key people who um, are going to need that. And what a terrible situation for what is supposed to be the land of the free, supposedly the greatest democracy on earth, where I am here saying to people that it would be a jolly good idea if the Marines were guarding people because of the threats of violence. How has it come to this? How has the greatest country on the planet allowed itself to come to this? And maybe this is the great wake up. This is what makes people choose to decide whether they go into the pit or whether they're actually going to walk in the sunshine. So maybe we have to go through these very difficult days for as many people as possible to see the truth and then to come to the light. That's the reality. This is not about politics anymore. This is about good versus evil. This is what it's all about. And again, those of you who know me, you get tired of me saying it. Those of you who don't know me, Take some trouble, look back. I have said that America, and this is for 10 years I've been saying this, America is the place where the battle has to be fought. And that's exactly what is unfolding. Okay, a little bit of British news. I'm so sorry because people want to hear what's going on in Britain. Of course they do. You remember, ooh, five years ago, I predicted uh, no deal when everyone was saying, oh, of course they'll do a deal, of course they'll do a deal. I said, no, no deal. And here we are, we are about seven, eight hours British time away from no deal. Um, and that's occurred because the French president, who I never liked, who was an ex-banker, um, deep state guy, has refused point blank to meet with the British Prime Minister. And actually also the British Prime Minister asked to meet with Angela Merkel, the German Chancellor, and she refused. So these two deep state leaders are absolutely refusing to meet with Boris Johnson, the British Prime Minister, to have face-to-face -face talks, social distancing, of course, um, to discuss how to get out of this deadlock. They, they don't want to get out of the deadlock. French want uh, open access to British waters to catch British fish. Um, and that's just not going to happen. And they don't seem to understand that in Great Britain, Boris Johnson won a general election, not because he has crazy white hair, not because he was the, uh, the reasonable candidate, but because he said, let's get out of Europe. 
it was the one policy that everybody could uh, connect around. That's why he won an absolutely resounding victory. And he's not going to go back to the British people and say, listen, I've sold you down the river. So it ain't going to happen. So anybody who's put money, you've had a bet that Britons could do a no deal. It looks at the moment like you might get some return on your cash. One minute to midnight, it is always possible. It's always possible that the French president uh, will cave in because Europe is set to lose a ton of money if it refuses to do a deal with Great Britain. Britain will just come to America, to Canada, to India, Australia, New Zealand, uh, any country that's not part of the European Union and Great Britain will do a trade deal with it. It'll be great for, for all, all parties and it'll be Europe that actually gets locked out. So one minute to midnight, <clears throat> don't be surprised if somebody comes running to the British Prime Minister and says, can we can we keep talking? So, so that's it. There are other aspects that you've asked me to talk about in Great Britain, but I don't want to be deplatformed. Britain's not the land of the free either. Um, you know what those topics are, and I will find a way to have that discussion. Um, once President Trump is properly back in office, I think we'll have a lot more freedom on social media. At the moment in this vacuum, there are some very powerful players who would like to close everything down, everything. Um, but hey, you know, we didn't come here to roll over and be kicked, did we? I, I certainly didn't, and I know you didn't. So those of you who, who've been so kind and, and gracious and generous, who have uh, contributed, not to keeping me going, but to keep my fight uh, against the BBC. The BBC uh, did some programs and defamed me incredibly incredibly lied about me um, and I just want to thank you you've been gener you know, generous in your donations and it, we're a long way towards carrying on that case if you can and find a little bit and you haven't yet given please do uh, it's the David and Goliath situation it's the CNN of Great Britain um, and I talk about topics that they don't like doing this is one thing and so one of the best ways is, of course, for the mainstream media to take your part. I'm not the president. I'm not in the White House. I don't have all the protection he has. Um, you know, I feel for people like David Icke. I feel for loads of people, you know, who have spoken their truth and in this so-called free society found that, you know, they might as well just have all their authority or their power or their wishes or their um, rights taken from them. And, you know, it's all part of what's unfolding in America. It's all part of this picture. So, look, you know, fingernails still here, not not panicking yet. Just be calm. Look, the person who will become president in January is the person that puts their hand on the Bible, is sworn in as the next president of the United States and says, I solemnly swear to uphold the Constitution. That is the moment that we're looking for. Not all these shenanigans and games at the moment. Thank you very much indeed for your time um, and try and enjoy the rest of your, your weekend if you can. Speak to you soon.